Today we're going to talk about underwater photography and the best tips for beginners. I get a lot of questions and DMs from people asking how to get into underwater photography and what the best tips are for beginners. So today I'm going to go through my 10 most important things that I think all underwater photographers should know when they're starting out. A special thank you to the sponsor of today's video, mpb.com. So tip number one is that you need to be comfortable in the water before you start taking the camera down there with you. This means be a good scuba diver or a good free diver, have good control over your buoyancy because this is going to be crucial before you start taking a camera underwater with you. You can't expect to achieve good images or videos underwater if you're bouncing up and down all the time and you have shaky hands. Essentially, you need to learn how to walk before you can run. So before you even think about taking a camera underwater, ensure that you're comfortable in the water and that you're a good diver. My second tip is to ensure that you understand the basics of water and light. Understand how light passes through water and the effect that the water has on light the deeper you go. Red is the first color to disappear, followed by orange and yellow, and by the time you reach 20 meters, green is also gone, and blues are the only tones that you'll see. You can bring back natural colors using artificial light, but that's a little bit more advanced, and we'll talk about that in another video. But if you know how to manipulate natural light and which angles to shoot from at different times of the day, you can achieve some really incredible images and videos. Getting close to your subject is incredibly important in underwater photography. Like I said in the previous point, light absorbs water, but there's also many particles within the water. These particles have a huge impact on visibility. On land, we can usually see all the way to the horizon unless for example it's foggy but underwater if we get 30 meters of visibility that's considered crystal clear the further you are from a subject underwater the more the subject is going to blur into the background and become more blue and less contrasty luckily for us a lot of underwater species are quite curious and happy to come close if you take a look at these images which i took on land they were taken at what would be considered close quarters but underwater this would just be far too far away to get usable images compare those to these images that i took underwater and you can see how much closer the wildlife was under the right conditions wildlife will come incredibly close to you underwater which is perfect for photography now this point ties in directly to the previous point and both on land and underwater it's incredibly important that we're respectful of wildlife whilst trying to get close to wildlife underwater it's important not to stress or harass them you'll have a much better encounter and therefore a much better chance of getting good shots if you maintain a little bit of distance and let the wildlife come towards you chasing wildlife is a surefire way of spooking them and the only shots you're going to get are of their tail as they're swimming away from you now this rule applies to wildlife photography on land as well as underwater and is a point that beginners often forget typically on land what beginners do is stand upright and take the image of the animal as they see it from their point of view. Underwater, the equivalent of this is taking only top-down images. Very rarely are these top-down images any good. Instead, try and get eye level with the animal for a more intimate connection. The best images are those that create a connection between the animal and the viewer and make them feel as if they are right there beside the animal. A common misconception is that only scuba divers have incredible encounters with wildlife and that you have to be able to dive very deep in order to engage with marine life. The truth is quite the opposite and the majority of biodiversity is actually found in shallow reefs across the world and this provides for incredible opportunities for photography with natural light. In fact, the majority of my underwater content up until the last year was taken whilst free diving. So if you have issues with your ears or scuba diving isn't really your thing, don't worry because you can still get into underwater photography. There are plenty of shallow marine habitats across the world that are perfect for snorkeling and this provides ample opportunity for photography with natural light. These shallow habitats are actually also perfect for achieving split shots, which are one of my favorite type of shot. They can be quite tricky to do, but once you nail them, they're usually pretty epic. A lot of people get put off underwater photography after they see the kind of gear that professionals use. Now, whilst it is true that having top of the line equipment can help you achieve incredible results, it's not a prerequisite. What's more important is that you develop an eye for composition and what makes an engaging image. I myself only recently upgraded from using a simple GoPro underwater to a mirrorless camera and housing. And whilst the images that I can get now on the new camera are far better than those in the GoPro, it's the basic principles that I learned using the more simple camera that have helped me get these images now. Editing underwater images and footage can be incredibly daunting, especially if you have no experience editing any kind of images in the past. The truth is, in a year or two, when you look back at the edits that you did when you first started photography, you're going to hate them and wonder what on earth you were doing. That's exactly how I feel about my early edits, both underwater and on land. But don't worry, that's an important part of the learning process and is something that you have to go through in order to find the style that works for you. I, along with the majority of photographers, edit all my images in Adobe Lightroom Classic. It's incredibly user-friendly and the best thing that you can do is just import a couple of images into it it and start having a play and finding which rhythm works for you. I actually have a YouTube video on how I go about doing basic edits on underwater images. If you're interested, it might just help you get a little bit of an understanding for the software and give you a starting off point for your edits. I also have another video on the best GoPro settings to use underwater and that's just going to help make the edits a little bit easier. Now this is a pretty basic one and not necessarily underwater photography related but it's incredibly important nonetheless. The ocean is a beautiful but powerful entity and we have to be respectful of that power. Conditions can change in the blink of an eye and we have to be prepared 
accordingly. If you're diving, it's incredibly important that you always listen to your dive guide and avoid going into deco time. If you're free diving or snorkeling, never do it alone and always have a buddy with you to watch your back. Now this might be the most important thing. The reason you want to get into underwater photography is because you enjoy spending so much time underwater with the incredible wildlife. And that shouldn't change just because you have a camera in your hand. Get creative and experiment with different angles and techniques. When I was shooting on GoPro, I used to do this technique where I would take the GoPro down with me and leave it in a place of high fish density. I would then swim away and let all the fish life come back to its natural state and just watch it from afar. Now this allowed me to capture some incredible behavior from fish that I wouldn't have been able to if I was swimming with the camera in hand. A big thank you for watching and a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, mpb.com. If you've ever talked to me about photography, you'll know that I'm a huge advocate for buying used camera gear. I was a student when I started photography and used camera gear fits in really well into student budget and mpb.com has always been my go-to platform. The process of buying is super simple and you can usually find whichever piece of gear you're looking for on their platform. They are the world's largest platform for used photo and video gear after all and actually about 95% of what I'm using at the moment to shoot I bought from mpb.com. What's even better is that you can actually sell your old gear that you're not using anymore on their platform as well. So if you're looking to upgrade your current setup or help pay for a new photography trip, it's as simple as heading onto their platform, letting them know what gear you have and what condition it's in. They'll give you a quote and if you're happy with that quote, they'll send you out the courier to pick up the gear. Once it's been assessed, they'll send you the money incredibly quickly. It really is as simple as that and like I say, I've been using them for a number of years now and in fact the Sony a7R 3 that I'm filming on at the moment, I bought from them about a year ago and I've been incredibly happy with it ever since. Hopefully this video has given you some tips that you can use the next time you go into the water or if you've been on the fence about starting underwater photography, maybe it's given you the motivation to take the plunge and get out there and start shooting. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.